Oh, I don't have any cash, man. I'm sorry. All right, well, you have a wonderful day. Uh, um, I actually, I have a 10. If you could give me eight back, we're, we're good. When we met at UCB, we were friends and on an improv team. And we decided to make a web series. Because we were just doing like improv and stand up and sketch. We were both auditioning. I did a movie off of Ooh. Craigslist. I was always looking at acting gigs on Craigslist and we just couldn't book anything. And so we were just like, let's make our own thing. I could kiss a loser. If yeah. anybody can kiss a loser. It's you. We all met in some variation of taking classes together at UCB. Lucia was working at a company called Life Booker, which is the basis for Deals, 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 and was able to help Abby and Alana get jobs yes. at Deals, Deals, Deals. We all worked the same day job for a couple of years while they were making the web series. And when we released our first episode, the two of them emailed us in almost immediately and were like, this is something. You guys have to keep doing this. And that was, I'll never forget that. And like, what a cool journey that's been with them. If I read I have wine. That means I want to sleep with you. Yeah, duh, bitch. Yeah. I had heard about these two fierce ladies, this dynamic duo. And I received an email one day asking me if I could join them in one of their webisodes. They were shooting right where I live. <laughs> so I said yes. <laughs> ladies. Hey. Me. And when I knew that Amy was going to do the web series, I quit my job. I quit. I knew it was going to happen. We had planned to go to LA to pitch us the show. We, we made Amy in the web series tell us what we needed to hear for this television journey. You guys are really in the zone. Just go with the flow and live your dreams, OK? Just talked about it. And we're like, what if we ask Amy to be an executive producer on it? Like, that's crazy, but let's just ask. We have her email now. Abby and Alana told me it was their finale, and I said, no, it's not. It's just the beginning. Abby called me. I was like upstate doing a short film. I ran to a field and I was screaming and dancing and jumping and freaking out. Yeah, and every step of the way throughout the process since wow. then, she's been very supportive. And I've refused to let them have a finale since, until today. Lucia directed a web episode. And then when we got the show, we really wanted Lucia to direct it. And then they came on as writers for season one, and then Paul became Trey. Trainer at Solstice and secret driving force of the show. <laughs> <laughs> I read Trey's lines and also a bunch of other parts at Table Reads. Eventually it became clear that I really wanted to play it. <laughs> so I auditioned for it and I won the role. I mean, there was a lot of competition. Well, that's true. Was it? Yeah. OK, cool. A lot of famous people auditioned for this. They just walked up to me one night at the theater and said, we want you to be in this pilot. They took a risk on me, and it paid off. It's been a really awesome time, and it's been really great to work with them, see them grow. And thanks to this show, I've learned everything I know about comedy from these ladies. Borderline personality disorder, border of insanity right now. Wow, border in this political climate? Good for you. Good for you. Jew? Border? There is just something magical and so real about their relationship. And so I think what's so special about the show is that that magic and honest, realistic friendship element has been able to get transferred over five seasons and still feels as sort of like gritty and real as it did on the web series. We were kids with Lily in this industry, all pretending to be producers. And then like we really became producers. The post office. Oh my god, the post office. OK, so the way that it controls women is um, <laughs> so today we're on the stage. I mean, we're pretty much finished with five episodes. Alana and I talk about this a lot. It's hard to like process. Today at lunch, we have like the meeting for the next block. There's no time to actually process like, whoa, this is the end. I was feeling it more while we were writing, not even sad to let it go, just like tripped out. I can't believe I've had this experience. Since we started making the web series, we've been working on this project for 10 years. I remember the first season, they're like, we want like blank walls. Like we want it to just feel like some ragtag apartment when you're in your 20s. You're finding furniture on the street. You're just stringing it together. This is Bed Bath & Beyond? Yeah, do they sell lots of stuff? When I took on this job, I inherited bins of smoking paraphernalia and sex toys. I was like, okay, this is my dildo bin. 
Broad City, there is no normal day. The show is really about packing a ton of content into a small amount of time. The style of camera work always tries to make room for improvisation. There's like a little bit of a badge of pride of working on a show that is a little bit grittier. There's always an element of New York City. You know, every episode's a day. It's written to feel like they're like always fucking running around, always something's up. For us, we're running the fuck around this godforsaken city every day. Oh, this is really nice. Oh, fuck you! <laughs> this is crazy. This is the last time we're gonna sit around these beautiful tables. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. This is um, all of our show, and I hope you guys feel that way. To an amazing final season where everybody's efforts really show and are <laughs> joy one of the biggest gifts of beauty of making Broad City has been creating a crew family. We're always sort of like a smaller crew sort of in it together, you know? And so that's always been a nice sense of community. Working on this crew is amazing. When your bosses are two of the most generous, fun-loving, respectful human beings on the planet, and that just makes everybody else better and more kind to each other. They were chosen for us because we would like them and because they would listen to women. Seriously, like a lot of crew yeah, people are like, like not into little naggy Jewish girls. And these ones are. And they were like, here you go, boss. You know what I mean, Rocco? And it's like, what do you need, boss? You know what I mean? They like, they, yeah. they take pride and pleasure and privilege in calling us the bosses. And that's fucking rare in every industry. It's 2019. That is so rare. Abby and Alana are true champions for the underdog. From season one, most of the department heads were people who had never led a department before. And Abby and Alana saw something in them and allowed them to move up into a position of power. And so that supportive atmosphere has been the best part of Broad City. We do get so much credit for the show, but it has been such a team effort. They're truly yes ending. We give them the script and they're like, oh, well, okay, if this, then what else? You know, besides not getting to act with Alana anymore, not getting to make this thing with all of them is the, the thing that I'm gonna miss the most. I think the biggest thing, an amazing thing to watch is to get to watch Abby and Alana direct. It's like super moving to watch all these women be able to come up and take like super high level roles on something that they all created together. All right. I think it's like the hardest days, I think are the ones I'm most proud of. This trash truck was a shit show. MoMA was like nuts, so big. but that was like yeah. a great directing day for you. Ooh, but like that day crazy. so bad. I earned the scars but, from that. Because of Broad City, I'm like trained to be able to make decisions on the fly as much as possible and as good as possible. Going again. Lucia is our main director. Lucia's direction makes me horny. She's the funniest director I've ever worked with. She pitches the, the most and the best pitches as a director. I feel very free to be able to give the notes that I want, give the pitches I want. You really have to build that trust, and I'm so lucky to have had it so good for so long. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Ugh. I'm not going to, like I feel fine, but if, I, for some reason, if for some reason I do throw up in this, use it. First gut reaction to a favorite moment, the joyful, joyful scene. We got to shoot with Whoopi Goldberg, and it also was a send off for Nicole. Where Alana and Abby try to grab a table, and two ladies come and snag the table, and that's Abby's mom, Suze, and my mom, Sandy. Shooting the Kirk Steele solo porn video was pretty fun. I don't think I would have just went to the trapeze spot on my own on a Saturday. When they asked me, I don't know where to be the creep in the park that masturbates when the women would get harassed in the street, how they would just immediately harass back. It's the handbag episode. I had to speak Chinese. When Abby dances naked through the apartment, Abby was just pulsing this fierce charisma, and we all teared up. I mean, it's the stupidest premise. She's just happy that I'm not there. Thank you so much. Love this look. I love this look. God, oh, we're hot. What bitches? You know, we always talked about from day one, the real romance in the show is Abby and Alana and how much they love each other and support each other. And 
I think that's inspired many young women, not only to create content and create art, but just to live their lives very fearlessly. We've been so lucky to have this beautiful project and that we have art to like work through shit in our lives with. It's like you try to make sense of shit just out there in real life, but then when you have a project to contextualize what you're going through, that meta shit, it like is therapy. I'm scared of the change too, but I know you need this, and I do too. You deserve to go, you deserve to go and experience this new thing, and we're both gonna be better for it. <laughs> I'm always the first one. <laughs> you really think so? I really do. Originally, we always knew that it was gonna end with Abby at the residency, and then in the background of Abby's screen, she was gonna see Alana. Alana was going to show up in Boulder and be like, bitch, I fucking, I moved here. And Abby would be like, wait, dude, my residency is only like six months. And, and I'd be like, like, she was gonna I'm go going to, school. to school here. And then we're like, and then we walk into the distance and like, we'll figure it out. And then Alana. I just had this gut feeling that Alana should stay in New York. And it was the four of us, us and Paul Lucia. And we all listened to my idea and let it sit. And then we were like, no, no, we no. Like, so like, no, 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 no. Like, they can't. Be I was like, just kidding. Apart. Yeah, you were like, no, that's dumb. But I was like, stupid, stupid. So we went back and we went back to like the JK version where Alana's like in Boulder, LOL. But also, I think it was us resisting like, the show is really ending. Alana does really have to stay in New York. The relationship doesn't have to go away. It's like a literal long distance relationship that Abby and Alana are gonna have. But we did just shoot the last moment of the whole show. Well, it was really. Really special. We were in LA writing with Paul Lucia and Paul kept being like, I mean, I've, I've watched the finale. There was a lot of this episode that Paul W. Downs knew. But I weirdly had a dream about this episode that included this and included that final shot and seeing all the duos in New York. Because in the end, the show's about Abby and Alana, but the show's also about New York City. No matter where Abby and Alana are, Broad City still exists because New York still exists. Abby and I like took a few minutes in the trailer. For me, that was like the first time I think that I was allowing myself to cry about Broad City being over at the show as a real person, as Alana Glazer. Yeah. We both wanted to be present in the moment of like, this is it. Like, this is the last time we're gonna be them. And let's like take a moment before we go and do it and acknowledge how long we've been doing this. We don't always get the privilege of getting to say goodbye. Shows sometimes go away without anybody knowing. Sometimes they go away without anybody getting a chance to kind of honor the work that they did. So I know everybody was really happy that they got to have a proper finale. The experience was like Broad City in a nutshell. It was cold. We stayed up all night. It was hectic. We didn't know if we were gonna get it done in time. You know, we were in the streets. Alana was barefoot. <laughs> it was kind of, what the entire series was. There's a season five picture wrap and a New York City wrap for Broad City. And a wrap with a lot of grazers. Thank you, Alana. The last scene is us saying goodbye in the show and us saying goodbye as, as us to each other. As like showrunners and creators. <laughs> it's been so beautiful. Like the more beauty, the heavier that sink in is. It's just been so beautiful. I feel good. I feel good. Two and one, one.